Did Winnie Harlow throw shade at America's Next Top Model? James Comey sings Beyonce. Will Black China star ever rise again? 2 Chains pops the question. Is 2020 the year for Eric Holder? And we have our photo of the week and more, so stay tuned. Welcome to What's the 4 on 1, your smart source for urban, lifestyle, and entertainment news. I'm Kizzy Cox. I'm Onika McLean. Hey, girl. AKA Nikki Baldwin. I'll tell y'all about that. Oh, Lord, time. listen. I have a good. stage name now. I need a stage name. Okay. I don't know what jokes you're telling this Nikki Baldwin, but all right. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to get started with some quick takes. All right. <laughs> so, in responding to a fan doing a recent appearance on what Watch What Happens Live, so you know mm -hmm. model Winnie Harlow? Uh huh. Uh huh. So she said that when she was on America's Next Top Model, that had very little to do with her actual success. So people were shocked. And so she had to actually, you know, go out and expand and explain what she meant. She said in an Instagram post, what agencies realized that she had been on a reality TV show, they figured her as a reality TV star and uh -huh. not an actual model. Mm -hmm. And so she said, from my experience, the best way to become a model is to find a reputable agency who believes in you and work hard, not being on TV as they're two different industries. They are, and it's true. That's why I'm changing my name because I'm telling, I know, right? I gotta bring it back to me. But it's true because because Hollywood and, and different industries have legal have tunnel vision and if you're doing more than one thing they think that you're not serious about one or the other and it may cost you uh, you know opportunity well then maybe she has a point then but people yeah, were like total. you know what she was ungrateful and you know but they gave have her to think about the flip of stuff. it you know when people are saying things like they've experienced something right you know so I could totally get that because the, when even as an actress if you do reality TV then they just feel like you're a reality TV star that's it right well well, all right. Well, you know. Well, now she's you know clearly one of the most famous models that ever came off the show, so Good she God. must be doing something right. Yeah, yeah. So the owners of a Chinese restaurant have been fined ten thousand dollars. Wow. Now get this, it's another kind of Starbucks incident. This is what happened, right? So they were fined by the Ontario Human Rights Tribunal. This in Ontario. So okay. this is this is right what happened. Canada. Ontario, Canada, guys, follow me, right? So the restaurant. <laughs> It was four black guys, right? One, Emil Wickham and his friends. Right. They demanded that the guy and his friends pay for their food before they got it. But why? I, I, like, I don't. I, but, and they didn't do that to any of the other patrons. This, this, this yeah. just doesn't make yeah. sense. Like, so, it was just like, but, I, but what's, what's yeah. good about it is that they were fined. Right. I think the $10,000 is probably not enough because it has to be like a. Yeah, but at least they, you know what I mean, they're acknowledging it, doing something about it, so, you know. Mm. Speaking um, of food. Yeah. Chinese food. You would need to get on Weight Watchers if you have too much Chinese food, right? <laughs> so, I like how you tried to segue. <laughs> that, that was, was like a hard segue. segue right. like, okay. So, Oprah, right? You uh -huh. know that Oprah is, is a big investor in Weight Watchers, yes. right? Yes. Always winning. Yes. God yes, with is. the blessings. God with the blessings. Yes. So, Oprah apparently invested... $43.5 million in stocks, right? Yeah. For okay. Weight Watchers. She sits on the board. Mm -hmm. She's in their ads. You see a taco. Yeah, I like She's yeah. still chubby. <laughs> Nobody wants to say anything about still chubby. Oh. Part. But it's worth she's, 400 She's good. She's a good weight. Come on now. She's a good weight for her. Her friend. She's good. Not for selling Weight Watchers. You should be skinny like uh, Jay Hood if you're selling <laughs> me Weight Watchers. If you get my $200 for Weight Watchers, Oprah. But anyway, now the company is worth <laughs> Four hundred million dollars. You see, we're blinded by Oprah. Wow. We're blinded by you, Oprah. You said four hundred million dollars. Yeah, for her forty-three point wow. five in three years. Cause she that is, is a huge return on like, investment. Like I don't even know what Oprah does with that money. You think she just like like makes a, a, she like goes in the bathtub? Dance. She puts it in the bathtub no, and just bathtub, in what, it. Her bathtub probably as big as the studio. Right. She's probably, <laughs> she probably says to Stedman, dance. <laughs> I'll be dancing too, Stedman. <laughs> Poor if I got sciatica. <laughs> Girl, you are crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Anyway. Poor, poor Stedman. Okay, so I can't even segue out of that. Listen, okay. So Eric Holder. <laughs> the, oh, we know him. We know him. Yes, the mm -hmm. U.S. Attorney General under Obama. Uh, recently told an audience at um, an event produced by the Georgia Alliance for Redistricting that he thought the Electoral College should be abolished. And yeah, I can't that, say I can't say I disagree. That was confusing. We didn't even know what it was until um, Obama got elected. They were like, "Wait, what you mean?" <laughs> it's so funny because you know, <laughs> they were like, "What you want?" 
What are you talking about, Willis? They keep talking about how Hillary Clinton, she won the popular vote, but not the Electoral College, and that's why we have Trump and all this stuff. And, you know, it happens. And it happens a lot with Democratic candidates, more so. So so we going to do away with it? I mean, we, we've we're doing a lot of not. stuff. Probably not. No, and uh, that's, that's unfortunate. But maybe, you know, Holder, you know, was setting the stuff up because he hinted that he would also might run for president in 2020. So maybe he was like, hmm, let's not abolish Oprah. those. Not against Oprah. She's not going to run. Because she will, this country is, is in debt. I'm telling you, <laughs> we will be good with Oprah. <laughs> we just get Trump to get North Korea and South Korea together, oh, you know, so there's no threats. And then we can just go ahead, Oprah. Uh, listen, yeah. tacos. That's not, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. Tacos and Subarus. Okay. Okay, so in more politics news, and this was really surprising. What? So in an interview with PBS NewsHour, James Comey, you know the former FBI director who was fired and had oh, all that Oh, the, uh, the memos. He was so scared. He was yeah. scared of Trump. He was like, I was so scared. <laughs> That's a gangster. Go ahead. No, but you know, Comey is, is really savvy. He knows what he's doing. He knows, mm. knows what he's doing with the press, and he knew what he was doing with Trump. Uh -huh. But anyway, he said that he actually sang Beyonce's, you know, Sandcastles? Uh -huh. Her song, Sandcastles, off the Lemonade sing album. It, sing it. I, I, I'm not going to sing it. I can't a little sing bit. It. Come on. During an official Come FBI briefing. Come on, guys. Sing, sing, no. sing. No. During an official <laughs> FBI briefing, he started singing that song. And then I'm like, what? So it turns out, you know how the FBI has cases and what they do, they give them like code names. Mm -hmm. So it was code name Sandcastle. And so he started going into the song. And then I was like, really? James Comey? You do that? So yeah. So That's apparently cute. he's pretty he's pretty cool. That's so and exciting. he also admitted that he listens to Kendrick Lamar and Taylor Swift. And he said he loves his wife. He was like, I was he said that it was uh, Valentine's Day when he had met with Donald Trump and he wanted to get home. Oh yeah. yeah. But look at him listening to Beyonce. Okay. Yeah, they can. <laughs> She's it's popular music. <laughs> just saying. Okay. I'm just saying. Oh speaking of industries right uh -huh. I, I don't know why i feel to need i need to have segues right i don't know <laughs> so, <laughs> but you're so bill okay. cosby mm -hmm. oh television the, the television academy yes took him off the hall well took his name off the hall of fame right after he'd been found guilty like, right yeah they're just like stripping him of all his stuff what of do you course. think about that i think it makes sense i mean he did the same thing to harvey weinstein so you know yeah. it's just sad even when i talk about it i feel sad but yeah. happier news the Met Gala. Did you see those dresses? Oh my god, amazing! Whoa. Look at Wait. Riri. Did you see Riri though? Yeah, she oh was my thick. God. I'm getting me, I'm getting me one of them Arabs because <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're... Ooh, she ain't gonna sing another know lick. She ain't gonna sing. You. you see, I was a little nervous when I saw the Met Gala. Uh, the theme of it because uh -huh. it was just like so blasphemous they were just like my no, god no but no the catholic church gave their blessing to the met gala they they were like this is good and they actually gave all of these different relics and stuff from you know the catholic church and stuff to be shown at the i don't gala, understand so. what happened in life what <laughs> can you have abortions now like i mean what okay no, you can't okay, okay you nope. can defend okay okay so anyway two chains Yes. Did that, you see yeah, that? Yeah, was so yeah. cute. Congratulations. So he got down on one knee. I followed them when they were going there. We're in the car, like just doing their whole Instagram. <laughs> we couple, we doing our thing. He got on one knee and he proposed to Keisha Ward, his girlfriend. Yeah, so but you know, people thought they were already married, though. I think they were a bit confused because they already have three kids together. That and so nothing. people were like, what? What's What's that that mean? They not married What's that mean? What's but that I'm mean? just saying. Because she wasn't thinking. leaving. I would be like, hmm. How many more kids we gonna have before you decide to marry me? The fabulous didn't do it. Emily and, and, B. And, and, Emily B. He still hasn't married. And her. Jim Jones and Chrissy, remember? They're not yeah. married. So I mean, oh, bigger than that. Oprah's not married to Stepman. Hmm. Well, Shut, it do that. Shut, Shut it down. Shut it down. Queen. She's a queen. All we right. let Oprah get away with everything. We'll be right back with what's popping. We wait. Taraji. Taraji oh, is engaged, girl. Wow. Taraji oh, yeah. is engaged. Yeah. Congratulations, yes, Taraji. Yes, congratulations. She kept that on the down low for a long time. She was taking that guy for four years, right? No, it was two years. Two oh, years. But she four. just came out with it like a few months ago. But yeah, two years. Younger man. I saw that brother. He's cute. He is cute. Like, it just arched my back a little bit. It messed up my sciatica. I said, oh, Lord, go ahead, Taraji. Whew. I'm sorry. You know, you ever see a man and you like, and they like, like do something back here to your spine and like make a shift? So go ahead, I know. Mm. Crazy. All That's right. Welcome back to What's the 411. Oh, come on, Kizzy. Yes, Give us so, what's popping. Mm hmm. So, Kardashian Jenner clan, obviously, 
they are not big fans of Tristan Thompson right now because um, he humiliated and betrayed her, you know. Who? Uh, Chloe. What she, what'd he do? Remember, I'm we talked joking. about it on the last right. show, so you know what happened. Uh, he was cheating so, while he was, she was pregnant. He was cheating while she was pregnant. So, you know, the family really, according to TMZ, they really want her to move on. Remain civil with him for the sake of their new daughter, true, but they want her to move on. Girl. Yeah, but no, no, no. Does he play basketball? Not. I just want to know. Does he play basketball? You know, yes, okay. he plays for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Do you okay. pass in basketball? <laughs> Get a brother a pass. <laughs> get a brother a pass because stop. Okay, boom, I don't Listen, get it. Listen, okay. all right. So, okay, but they are not being pushy with it. They're letting her make her own decisions. They're supporting her, but they really do wish she should move on. So why would um, they say that? Got like, I mean... They, they have to make their presence. I mean, listen, if it was my family, I would be saying the same thing. You know what I mean? You don't want to see your family out there getting played. I would be saying but it to TMZ. She's, but listen, listen. Anyway, Chloe uh, is still standing by her man. She's right there with him. She's was seen out and about with him in Cleveland eating at a restaurant. She went to one right. of his games to support him. So it seems like she is really in this. She has that so, new baby. You, come on, you know. Oh, you don't. Know. Yeah. It, yeah, when you have that new baby, you need the family thing. Like, Oh, of course. Of course you need. You definitely yeah, you need support. Need the, you need the family thing. But, okay, so my thing is, you're saying that. Do you think they should stay together of as course. a couple? I think they should stay together as a couple, get some therapy or something. Everybody don't have to break up a cheat. First of all. Mm -mm. I got I to gotta disagree with you. Mm -mm. If someone cheats on you, that's No, no, it. no. I'm not saying that. I'm saying in this particular situation. Because if you go back, remember, how did she hook up with him? He left his ex, Jordan Craig, when she was pregnant and then got with Chloe like shortly thereafter. So okay, so to how me, you got him is how you keep him. So keep him. You already know he, what he's going to do. <laughs> Stay. It's not like you should be shocked. I wouldn't be shocked. I'd be like, this is what he do. But I just like, feel like that. Why you got to keep him? Break up? She's going to go get another guy from the NBA. Like how many NBA? <laughs> she already, like how many guys? And it, it's not how many players on the team? It's 12. That's a lot. Okay. Listen, I yeah, I think she should move on because I, I think it's a pattern. He's already established that pattern, and he's just going to keep cheating on her. And the ex, Jordan Craig, who's super, that. super, super Stay, classy. Stay, girl. Stay. No. Super classy. So she puts this on Instagram. Because, you know, everybody, once they figured out that she Tristan Tori Hart at her. She did was she like, Tori Hart her? What's, what's Tori Hart? What did Tori Hart Tori Hart, Hart work when... when um, Kevin Hart got mad, got cheated on his, mm -hmm. his his latest wife, his newest wife. Right. And uh, Tori Hart was like, hmm, how you get him? It's how you get No, him. she didn't do that. She didn't? She, no, I'm saying she took the high road. She was really classy. Oh, what did she and do? And she said on an Instagram post, if you respect yourself and you respect others, you would never make light of the misfortune of anyone, nor would you feel indemnified when it comes at the expense of others. Wishing peace for everyone. So basically, she's saying, you know what? I'm not reveling in the fact that you know that he cheated on me. No, that was and shade and petty. It, I don't feel she like it was did, shade and petty. She did it. She did it like no. the petty way. It's like, no. well, girl, you all right? She did that. You know that? You no, know that? I don't. Like, mm. No, I don't think so. Okay. I didn't. I didn't feel. I didn't feel the. I know shade. I, know I feel shade. like people were coming for her. Like, oh, what you gonna say? What you gonna say? What you gonna do? And she's like, you know what? No, they expect me to do the lot, the low road. They go low. I go high. I would have stopped following her. Nobody would hear that. <laughs> <laughs> you did not just say she that. She like Cynthia Bailey from the housewife. No, I don't care if you. You gotta have the drama. No. Don't tweet anything. Just don't say anything. No. Man. Okay. Kudos to you, Jordan Craig. I like uh, that. Tana, While we're right? on the topic of the Kardashians, I think you have oh, a Kardashian okay. story as well. I do have the Kardashian yeah. story as well, but I forgot about it because <laughs> I was so into your story because <laughs> I was so excited about it. But Boss says the Black China, right? So it's a Kardashian, right? Sorry. Oh, so, did I roll my eyes? I'm sorry. Okay. You, uh, we, we were loving Black China when she first dis Rob. Y'all was like, when she had a little wig <laughs> on looking like a Stafford wife, y'all was all happy about it. So now, uh -huh. this is a, oh, now? No, yeah, we have the tape. We can run it back. Okay, so anyway, so Black China, she's not getting her her show um her show creds anymore. You know, like they go to those uh, clubs those and clubs. Then they're, they're not booking her anymore since she broke up with Rob. Like she doesn't have the same cachet. Like, yeah, the finesse. Like they just don't don't want it. And I think those photos that of her on the internet. She has some photos on the internet with. What photos? It's just she's on the beach. It doesn't look great. It just doesn't look great. Like you can't have you. You know, it just gotta be polished. <laughs> Just doesn't look great. Like I don't what? understand that that, that all that um, 
Botox stuff and the fake butts and stuff like it starts to lump up and clump but up. But I mean, like no, I think if she was still with Rob, though, I think her career and you know all the club appearances, all the money would still be flowing. But she's also messing herself she with up the, with that little eighteen year old boy that she's messing with. That's you think that's, that's what it that's is? Crazy but she's gonna get back with Rob. You, you guys don't think she's gonna get back with Rob? Rob? She allegedly, the rumor has it that she's been sending him nude photos again, of course, and trying to sweet talk him and trying and she, behind the eighteen year olds back to get back with Rob. Guess what? That's what I heard. And she's getting back. With Rob, she targeted that man like he she loves wants, she's her. Want, she wants to come up, but listen, okay. I mean, but you know, she has branding and all mm -hmm. that. Do you think she's gonna be able to get back and do her thing? And I don't know, like that, that, um, that holds me winning. It kind of <laughs> only works for the Kardashians, in my opinion. <laughs> like, black women, I don't know, they just society holds us to this, uh standard that they just no. don't let us just oh, do well. whatever you but know no, like, strippers like, it doesn't matter because we had eve we had cardi b no and no they no, are no doing no. things but, but yeah no, not but the they have to leave thing. the stripping game it's mm -hmm. like those are rag to riches kind of stories like poor girl in the hood she had to strip now she better not ever do that again and now moving forward mm -hmm. for black women i'm just saying like like other cultures just get passes that's that's what i feel i don't know i feel like black china also is kind of her worst enemy because did you did you remember the fight that she had last month like at six flags uh-uh i don't tell oh us about my it you guys remember goodness. it come on so she had it. this huge fight okay so she's out with her kids and uh, allegedly somebody tried to touch one of her kids so you know those those um baby carriages that look like little cars uh -huh. pink so she picks it up. There's video. There's video, y'all. Go check it out. She picks it up and starts swinging it at we don't know who. And so this man tries to hold her back and she takes off her, her, her coat or jacket or whatever and she picks it up again and tries to go after whoever that was. But they're off camera so you can't see. Oh, goodness. So it was crazy. There was like this crazy brawl. And she's like, you know what? You know, I'm going to do whatever I need to do to protect my kids. Waka, waka, waka. Right? So long, waka, 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 long story short, mm -hmm. Mommy, which is the company that actually, you know, produces that particular stroller, they were in talks for a development deal for her to produce her own line and for her to be an ambassador for the actual, and you they, know, and, they, took it and they rescinded it. They brought it, they took it away from her because they were like, you're not reflecting our company properly. So she could have, you know, played the whole Mommy lane, you know. Our executive producer and I were having this whole conversation. She could have played the mommy lane. And look, she actually shot herself in the foot. Yeah. Just totally threw that away. And yeah, mental health is a thing. That you and that would have been cherish. much more money than a club appearance. I mean, you're like now, you know, have your own line of carriages. you got this big company behind you. I mean, she needs to get it together. Black and China, get back with Rob. <laughs> I want to see more of Rob in China. It was hilarious. Uh, I don't know. They like oil and water <laughs> to me. You know Rita Ora, right? Uh-huh. Yes. So in an interview with the Sunday Times of London, Rita, the hip-hop artist and actress, says that she believes her career would have been more successful if she was a man. So well, she said this. that's everyone. Right, so this is what she said. Quote, I want to find the right word here, and maybe this is my interpretation, but I do feel I got discriminated against because I was a woman. I almost felt, now maybe this is just my interpretation, I could have had a better chance if I'd been male. So, what do you, what do you think, Onika? Well, well does she have a point? She's stating, because you said, she does, obviously, She does have a point. I mean, the, the guys in my, in my industry, they make more money than I do. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's just like a hard fight for us, you know. Right. It's, 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 it's sad, but it's, tr it's, in my experience, it has been true. Like, you see, I'm trying to use my words. Yeah, you're like, oh, you, you see, I'm like her. No, Maybe but this my, is my interpretation. Yeah, because people will like shut you down. Boom. Mm -hmm. Right? But, yeah. So yeah. you think she has a point? Like, so you think she would have been further Especially ahead? Especially in hip-hop. Yeah. I mean, because what she's probably assessing is her skill set and, and her hustle. Mm -hmm. Right? So if, if you're getting blocked and you're still doing all the things that they tell you you got to do when you got to do them and it's still not, you know, you're not getting that return on investment, you got to blame it on something. Right. I'm surprised she didn't say black. Well. Woman. Because that's a, that's a double. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there's, I mean, there's not a lot of women in hip hop anyway. You know what I'm saying? In general, there's not a, a lot of women. So, right. I mean. I think it's black. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think you're right. I think she definitely has a point. I mm -hmm. think that you have some whack MCs mm -hmm. <laughs> that are men, and somehow they're still getting deals. They're still people are still bumping their stuff. They're still getting downloads, and you're like, how is this happening? But it's just so, so much more yeah. of them that they let in. Like, right. So, so you think there's like yeah. a block? Remember Jamie Foxx? What he said about comedy? He said that he changed his name to Jamie Foxx because it was so many men going up and. It wasn't a lot of women, so he changed his oh, name to Jamie Fox wow. because if his name was on the list and they saw Jamie Fox, they, they don't know, know it was a it man was, or oh. woman, and then a they you know they have eight guys and then a woman, so it was a better chance for him to go up because it was always men. Wow. Just a misogynistic it culture. It is misogyny. It's all it goes through everything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Sorry, mm -hmm. Rita. At least she can act. <laughs> At least she's you know getting some success with that. And she's in and you know, it's changing. Yeah, the culture is changing. Me too. The whole thing. Yeah. The feminist movement. Yeah. Me Too is different. Well, me, me Too is women saying enough with the misogyny and patriarchy and all that stuff. Yeah, I thought Me Too was the women saying enough with the long ass hugs and the rape. That, I mean, that, that all ties into misogyny, but, though. That's what that is. No, but I just think feminism and Me Too is, should be separate. Cause no, it's they, all the they, same. It's under the same you, but If you umbrella. lump it together, when you lump things together, like it just, like, it just takes away its punch no no i think it's all the same i think it's all the same struggle and all the same movement for you know to dismantle well, what do you misogyny. guys think what do you guys that's think? think that's a very good question what do you guys think do you think the me too movement and the feminist movement is the same thing is it lumped together i think it's think not it's about it's different? not about this being lumped together i think it's under the same umbrella of dismantling misogyny okay. because i think it's misogyny so that I'm allowed you. Yeah. Okay. that allowed you know men for so long to do feel like they had the right to touch women a certain way make certain inappropriate comments you know what i mean that that whole culture allowed that yeah and now it's like so crazy at work because it, it's like oh I I don't want to touch you because I don't want to be. Yeah, you know, like, I, I, I've had that too. We're like, oh, can I close the door? I don't know because now me too. Just don't rape me if you're going to close the door. I'm like, <laughs> listen, Matt Lauer. <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking? I actually I went into that an interview so with many. a man and he was like, are you okay with me closing the door? I'm like, absolutely. How are we going to have an interview with like people talking outside in a newsroom and all this but see, loudness? And that's still a target. Really weird. That's still targeting you, right? Yeah. Because if you were a guy, they wouldn't say that. Right. So, it, yeah. So, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. All right, keep it locked. We'll be right back with more of What's the 4 in 1. So with all this talk about Me Too and Time's Up and people cheating and all these things, we really need some motivation. We need some positivity. I'm here. What you talking about? We need some positivity. What you talking about? Hello, the, the topics. Anyway, mm -hmm. you're Ray Sunshine Girl. Okay, and so we have our Ooh, motivational shade. quote of the week. And it comes from Teresa L. Holmes. Miss Holmes posted her quote on LinkedIn, and this is the quote. One of my best decisions ever was when I chose to come down out of the balcony and take center stage in my own life. I love Go that. Go ahead, Miss Teresa. That. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like that. Yeah. Center stage, you put the light right on, you just stand there. Right, exactly. So thank you so much Exposing for that, Teresa. We yourself. loved it. Good Oh, I like that. Stay tuned for coverage of the New York African Film Festival. Hi, I'm Kizzy Cox, and this is What's the 411, bringing you the latest in entertainment news, sports, and lifestyle. This year, the New York African Film Festival is celebrating its 20th anniversary, and it's doing so by looking back to its roots with a tribute to Usman Sembane, the father of African cinema, and also looking forward to a whole new set of filmmakers bringing the African experience to the big screen. Ms. Bonetti, it is such a pleasure to meet you, and this is 20 years. Like, what does it feel like? Um, it feels like one long day, <laughs> actually, but it's, it's, we're just so happy to make it to this point, knowing the challenges and also the opportunities we look forward to. And what is most important, what keeps us going is that we have amazing filmmakers who keep presenting, you know, the uh, new works and the production has increased over the 20 year period. And how could we not continue if they keep providing the material? And of course, we've built audiences and people have come to expect um, the African Film, New York African Film Festival and the other ancillary programs we do year round. So we're, we're very pleased with our achievements and um, also that as a collective, the community has embraced this as their own. Yes. 
So I know the motto is looking back, looking forward. I mean, what role did Usman Sembain have on you and your decision to start a New York African film festival? It all started with him because he told the story like no one else and it was our opportunity to, through the cinema, because for so long, um, opinions formed about Africa and African people were based on images people saw, which we had no control over. And here was this body of work, starting with Semben, who was just put a mirror to our face and the world. And for us, that Semben is, is, is my hero. And he graced us with his presence three times during the course of the 20 years of this festival. So he's, you know, he's, he's Legacy looms large still for us. You're having a tribute from Mr. Usman Simbain and you're the biographer for him. What was it like? What was he like in person? Uh, Simbain was a, an ordinary man who did extraordinary things. He had a very, very humble start in life and he realized that uh, really there is no faith or fate that cannot be cheated. So from those humble beginnings, he reinvented himself and thought in a very, very um, audacious way that he could also change Africa and change the world uh, by using a very powerful weapon, not with bullets, but with a film. And so what effect, uh, what uh, influence did Usman Sembain have on you as a filmmaker? No, uh, I think the Samben is, uh, is our father of our cinema. It's what does it mean for you to be here honoring another person who's a legend in African culture? It's something I have to learn, you see, because we, I, here we haven't had enough exposure to the African filmmakers. You know, you become comfortable in your own world and you don't know what's outside of it. And that's why these kind of festivals are very important. And, and, and I'm grateful for them. Motto for this year's festival is Looking Back, mm -hmm. and they're honoring Usman Sambain. How, what, kind of, what kind of influence did he have on you as a filmmaker? A great, great, great inf influence on me personally. Um, just because I think that uh, my one of my big reasons for wanting to be a filmmaker was being African, but always knowing that people weren't seeing what Africa was, and Usman Sambain's films were the first films that I saw that were African, but weren't, you know, African because they were being played as an African film among other films. They were like films of their own right. They were artistic, they were powerful, they were intellectual, they were full films. They were better than any films I'd ever seen before and they were African and that was a very special thing to see that you know being an African filmmaker wasn't always, filmmaker wasn't always being about pigeonholes. Our photo of the week, oh it's so cute, is of 2 chains and his girlfriend Keisha Ward at the Met Gala. I do. <laughs> I do. That ring was nice too. That's a nice ring. Onika. Yes. Girl. Yes. Can you believe it? What? The show is over. No. We've had so much fun. We always do. And the end comes so quickly. That's going to do it for this week's edition of What's the 4 in 1, your smart source for urban, lifestyle, and entertainment news. Until next week, check it out. Check it out. Check it out. Check, 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 check us out on our website, what's the 411.com. Yep. And remember to hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, What's the 411 TV. And download our podcast. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, uh, Google Play Music, Stitcher, and tune in. Yes. Yes. I'm Kizzy Cox, and on behalf of my co-host, Onika McLean, my crazy co-host, thanks you for watching What's the 411. We will see you next time.